Hi there, it's Black Bright. Welcome to my channel. And today I wanted to talk about Meghan and Harry. It's all over the place, all over the papers. Everybody's making a big deal about it. I mean, these are two people who have been born into royal family, but you cannot um, choose how you're born, who your parents are. Sometimes you have children who are born of parents who are abusive. You have children who are born of parents that you know who didn't want them so you have lots of different scenarios where people are born into families or in Meghan's case she actually chose to join the royal family and then you realize it's not really what you expected sometimes you can opt out a lot of times we can't opt out from our parents but in Harry's case he has stepped down from royal duties and I think even though he's not saying anything out loud we all know why it's the innuendos it's the subtle racism and the thing is is because they were uh, there was um covertly racist <clears throat> when he was a royal member of the family but can you imagine already there's blatant disrespect and blatant racism now that they've stepped down it's almost as though they feel as though they can treat them or speak about them as they wish and I believe that is the reason why they stepped down they knew that they were being protected under the royal banner and they wanted people to see exactly what they're going through and I think they've been having a really hard time. I'm glad that they are revolutionary royals and whether or not they want to keep the title or not, it doesn't matter. I don't understand why Prince Charles is saying, oh, we're going to stop funding them. They've already said they don't want the funding. So it's, all, it's that control all the time. And I think that's another thing they're stepping away from. That control, they're not allowed to do anything they want to do. They want to do charity. They're not allowed to do it under the royal banner. So they want to free themselves from all those rules and regulations. And it's like anybody who's in a situation that they do not like or do not approve of or it goes against their morals and values they tend to step down or step away look how many kings have um, abdicated the throne it's not a big deal but they're making it look like it's a big deal one um, tweet I saw is about them calling Prince Harry P um, pussy whipped by Meghan Eamon Andrews he he is it Eamon Andrews? Anyway, Eamon somebody or other, totally calling her out and calling her all the names under the sun. And it's not something you do. Whether she's a royal or whether she stepped down from that, that royal umbrella doesn't mean that you can now start saying anything you like. But that is what they're doing. They're literally saying anything they like about the two of them and they think that it's okay. And I think what the Queen is doing in trying to um, resolve this situation is to not reveal what people were really thinking. Because what Harry and Meghan have done, which is extremely clever, is that by stepping down, they've exposed everyone. Everyone who wanted to say something. Everyone who's been having their little gripe. And they've, they, they, well, they haven't exposed them. The individuals are exposing themselves just by their behavior and by their tweets and their, the stuff that they're putting on social media. So that is my viewpoint on um, Harry and Meghan's stepping down. Um, I just wanted to make sure I've covered everything. I'm using a different laptop. It seems quite blurry, but I think you can see me. Um, Okay, Meghan and Harry are likely to keep their HRH titles despite stepping down from royal duties. And that's another thing. Even though they said they're stepping down, they still said they're going to have their loyalty to the Queen. They're not being disrespectful. Where they need to be, they will be. 
So I don't know what the big deal is. It's not like they're saying, oh, I don't want to have nothing to do with the royal family. That is not what they're saying. They have a child. They want that child to be brought up in the best environment possible. And they've chose to spend six months in Canada and six months in the UK. What's wrong with that? The fact that you cannot control them or the fact that you cannot label them, especially with the media, they're not going to have such a heyday when they are ordinary people, so to speak. I wonder if they're allowed universal credit. Anyway, they, will, they won't They need it. They'll be able to do their charities. They'll be able to raise money in whichever way they choose to raise it. And I'm sure it will be ethical. So, the you know, I think what the media is peed off about is that they will not be able to slant them the same way as because they've stepped down as they could as royals. I mean, the same way with Andrew. I mean, Prince Andrew, yes, he deserves what he's getting, but the same token, you know, he's he's still a royal. So they can have a heyday with that. They can't have a heyday now with Harry, Harry and Meghan, and that is peeing them off. Um, currently, they do receive some funding through the Sovereign Grant, which is a funding from the monarchy to cover official expenses like residences and workspaces. Under their new arrangement, the couple plans to give up their share of the sovereign grant, which they state only covers 5% of their costs and is only used for official office purposes. So um, they intend to give it up anyway, so I don't know why Charles is dipping his nose in and saying, oh, we're going to take back the fund. We're not going to fund them. And then they're talking about the house that they've got. Oh, they shouldn't have that house because it's paid out of public funds regardless stepping down from royal duties or not they are still royal they are still born royal you can't take that away the fact that they're stepping away from a certain percentage of royal duties does not mean that they're not born and bred of royal descent so i don't even know what they're going on about is that control and oh, Anyway, Meghan and Harry are choosing a new working model that will allow them to have financial independence from the monarchy, thus allowing them future financial autonomy to work externally, as well as earn their own income, which until this moment, they have been prohibited from doing so. You hear that word prohibited, not allowed to earn their own income. If that is not control, I don't know what is. So why don't you look at it from their point of view and stop looking at it from a selfish point of view or from a public point of view or somebody that you can point fingers at and criticise and put down when they don't do things that you want them to do because you feel as though you're, you're paying for them. Because that is what the public is like. They feel as though because um, a lot of um, the royal families is, um, is out of public funding, they have control in what they say and what they do. But you don't. But I think this is a good, um, this is a good, I think this is good. I think it is really good. Um, so that is they're prohibited from doing so due to the current structure and financial arrangements. So can you imagine how liberating it must be to relinquish control? No one to tell them what they can and cannot do because they're not paying them. It must be so liber liberating. I mean, many of us haven't been in, pr in prison, but a lot of us have been in controlling situations where you have to do what the person tells you to do. And it doesn't feel good at all. I mean, even when you think about a working situation, if you need the money, if you need a salary, you have to you have to do what the employer tells you to do. You can't go off and do your own thing. Even if you're self-employed, yes, you you have a certain amount of freedom, but then there are still certain things you have to do. You still have to pay tax, you still have to pay your employees and stuff like that. So none of us are totally free from any form of control. And we all need boundaries and we all need an element of control. Otherwise, the world would be in chaos. But I think the degree that the royals are controlled is extreme. And I think that is that was the problem. And OK, it takes Meghan Markle to say, listen, 
this isn't good for us this isn't healthy for us this won't be healthy for our child this kind of environment and we don't want our child growing up and seeing all of this um, bickering and stuff like that they don't want their child they want their child to grow up healthy so they've taken him and they're putting him in a place where they feel has a healthier environment which is Canada so Prince Harry and Meghan have also updated their media policy, which will ensure diverse and open access to their work. So they're not hiding anything. It will be transparent. The media can dip their nose in as and when they want. But they don't like that. They like scuttling around the corners, don't they? They like to think, oh, what are they up to? Oh, should they be doing that? Oh, are they allowed to do that? Oh, yeah, let's print it. This way, they haven't got any control over them. I mean, Harry and Meghan, that's a really revolutionary um, thing to do. Um, let me see. By the spring of 2020. So that is when this media policy will come into place. They plan to change things like no longer participating in the Royal Rota, a press pool dedicated to providing exclusive access to the official engagements of the royal family but also sharing more information directly with the public via their own communication channels. Can you imagine? It's a bit like Trump. They are um, using Instagram. <laughs> using Instagram to tell them that they're stepping down. What a slap in the face. And, you know, they'll soon be using Twitter. I mean, I would assume that the royal family cannot use Twitter. You know, it's kind of... Um, let me say control then what they can and cannot do on Twitter or say but um, I sent them a tweet yesterday at Sussex Royal just to say well done can you imagine you actually have access to um, Meghan and Harry it looks like they don't want the bureaucracy and the limitations. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex wrote that they would divide their time between United Kingdom and North America. This geographic balance will enable us to raise our son with an appreciation for the royal tradition in to which he was born, while also providing our family with the space to focus on the next chapter, including the launch of our new charitable entity the royal pair said in in the statement and remember they was they were hadn't given archie a title anyway so you can imagine they'd already intend to dethrone him um minimize his rights or minimize his validity or authenticity to to royal to royalty so why should what is it in what was in it for them what was in it for them? All they were looking for is to let see, watch them fail, as far as I can see. So Harry and Meghan's waxworks have been removed from the royal display at Madame Tussauds. Now, really, how petty. They've moved the waxworks of Meghan and Harry away from the royal family and put it in one corner. How did you wait? So, as far as I can see, from being outside, this is just my opinion, um, Harry and Meghan are fed up with the racism, they're fed up the, of the bureaucracy, they're fed up of the control, they're fed up of the limitation, they just want to live a normal, healthy life, non-intrusive life. Um, and why is, it, why is it a crisis not to want to, is, why is it a crisis to want to step down? from royal duties. Um, can you imagine they'd be calling them every five minutes and they have to attend regardless. And the thing is, is that, okay, attending, but when you attend and you know, there's this um, friction in the, in the room, who wants to be in that friction? I don't know if you've been in a work situation where, you know, somebody's not speaking to you and the whole office is like a, a knife, you can slice it with a knife. It's not nice being in a frozen environment and just to put on face for the public. People know, people can see, people detect body language. And that's what they're looking. They're looking at the relationship between the Queen and Meghan, between the Queen and Prince Philip. And all of that, all of those dynamics are going on with the public. Who wants to be scrutinised like that? So, and now, um, stepping down has 
left the public to be disrespectful. But what it's doing is showing their true colours. So, um, hopefully they have used money they received so far wisely and saved enough. I would imagine that they have. Um, I don't think this is something that's just come out of the blue. So they've obviously been planning well ahead. They don't need a lavish lifestyle. I mean, Harry, he's so down, to, he's so down, down to earth. Um, some people say it's a distraction, all of this stepping down, you know, the Australian fires, um, you know, the death of Soleimani, um, the impeachment of Trump. And did you know 736 homeless people died last year? So, and then we have this woman who posed as a boy to assault schoolgirls as young as 14. So it's, it's happening, whether it's a distraction or not. All you need to know is where your focus lies. We know that there's lots of things going to go on this year, 2020. We know things are going to be going down when um, the UK leaves the EU. We know the, this, what, what's happening with Trump and Iran, that's going to blow up. We know mega things are going down. So we mustn't let the lives of other people, the personal lives of other people, prevent us from taking stock about what is happening, making sure you have your reserves, making sure that you're conscious, making sure that you're saving, making sure that you're trying to secure as much as you can while you can. So, and that's all for now. Bye-bye. Oh, and if you like what I talk about, please subscribe, share, and like, subscribe, and share. Yeah, I think that's it. Bye-bye.